Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the channel. So basically we've seen the, uh, the hydroelectric power plant in quite a detail. Not quite a detail but you know we've had a number of videos on that and till now the discussion so far the discussion has only been related to the conventional uh, hydroelectric plant where a huge mass storage is required first of all. Today let's say we talk about the runoff river plant. Today we talk about the runoff river plant. Run off. So why is this marker not working properly? Anyways, I believe this is visible, right? Yes, it is. So in the runoff river plant, what do you have is you don't have any storage basically. Why is the storage? I'll tell you. So basically the basic definition is that you don't have any storage. Water is coming. You are directly, you know, utilizing it. You are directly utilizing it to run your turbines and to run your alternators. Fine. Directly it is coming through a stream, through a lake, through a, uh, through whatever, a, a waterfall, a natural waterfall, whatever it is. Now, the thing is, the thing is that there could be seasons. There could be seasonal variations. And what are the seasonal variations? So, for instance, you have a high rainfall season. For instance, in the summer, you have a lot of water then. So what do you have is you have a lot of water and maybe that exceeds your requirement and it can go to waste, right? Yes, it can. And the next is a water shortage season where you have low rainfall season or you could say in the winter season there is rainfall but there is snow so they are, they are not melting for instance. Uh, it, there is ice so the water level is decreased so what can you have is you can have a reduced uh, uh, volume or reduced uh, you know quantity of water available it may not even be sufficient to feed your load whereas on the other hand you may have an excess such amount of excess that may go to waste even so to, for this thing sometimes a small sort of a source storage is associated with the runoff river plant for instance the ghazi barotha dam over here this is a runoff river plant you would say that it has storage but the storage is not a huge mass storage in this case as in the conventional over here it is only to regulate the flow for instance you have a high rainfall season you have a huge amount you, you, the water is going to waste so why not store it for that instant of time where you you are uh, your water quantity is so low that it is not uh, fulfilling your demand so you would regulate this the the, the storage you due to storage you would regulate the flow throughout the year this is done it is story for this that is why the storage is done so uh, basically what do you have is uh, you take the uh, the the fluctuating flow is not good for the turbine anyways it's not good for the turbine it can cause a water hammer or cavitation and this and that just let it go whatever it is so basically the kinetic energy is utilized in this case so over there we talked about the potential energy over here we talk about the kinetic energy which is what which is one half m v squared small v is for the speed then you have uh, from the definition of the density you have what the mass is rho uh, density times volume so i would write over here it would be one half uh, uh, density times volume and then small v squared isn't it like this it is now if you talk about what the the uh, this is basically the energy associated. This is the kinetic energy that is associated with the water. So if you convert it into the electrical energy, if I say I am talking about the electrical energy, EE for instance, so this would be one half and you would have an eta, which is again the same overall efficiency or you can have another factor by a name of CP that would be a conversion coefficient eta rho volume speed squared fine yes sir and this is in joules or this is in watt seconds again now if i divide this by time so if i divide this by time e divided by t again in the same case as i did previously so this would be rho and i would divide this v upon t 
v squared so this comes out to be half rho v upon t is the volume per unit time is the flow of water is discharged and small v squared for the speed similarly converting so this is the power this is the power which is the hydraulic power so if you have this electrical power to be converted so you will take it as half and you will take the overall efficiency of the system rho is for the density and then you have q for the discharge and v squared for the velocity the units for this are watts or these are joules sec watt second or joules watt second or joules similarly over here you have watts you remove this row 1000 you know this very well the available power half eta rho q v squared the uh, Available power therefore depends upon the water flowing through the turbine and the square of its velocity. So velocity is uh, again you know given by uh, as you can say over here that as velocity is equal to or I would write it over here that as velocity you can write from uh, is under the root 2 gh under the root 2 gh from Newton equation 2 as is equal to v of square minus vi square taking uh, vi is 0 uh, a as g and s is h so over here you have v this thing so you can imply that the electrical power associated could be like this uh, the uh, square would cancel out with square what would be the relation eta rho q g h this is in watts again fine yes so this is what you have this is from if you put the value of the velocity over here is that fine it is similarly you can also put it as uh, in terms of uh, 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 area and, and volume area and speed so area and speed so also q is equal to a times v we know this that q is equal to the area times speed area times speed so this comes out to be what half of eta rho q is area times speed so v cube watts is that fine or joule per second yes let's go, move on to examples let's move on to the associated examples i hope this is clear this is just uh, uh, very simple okay yes nothing else so the the water for a small run of river plant is to be delivered from an upstream through a conduit penstock with a diameter of one meter so a diameter of one meter so basically uh, we are interested in the area and the area the penstocks are normally circular it could be an open channel as well or that curved type or whatever is that called that semicircular shape mainly we'll be dealing with circular closed conduits pen stocks that are called build of steel or concrete so basically the rectangle is the circular area pi d squared by 4 so the diameter is given 1 meter calculate the maximum amount of electrical power that can be obtained so power that can be obtained is unknown if the velocity of the flow is 3.5 meter per second and then what you have assuming the overall efficiency of the system to be 75 percent so have a look for the formula you have got your uh, area you will get from pi d square by 4 you have everything so you can just put it in the formula you can just put it in the formula half of rho is 1000 uh, 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 eta is 0 0.75 and then you have area so for area this would be pi d squared upon 4 for a circular conduit and then velocity cube so 3.5 meter per second cube and this implies that the power comes out to be 12.6 kilowatts 12.6 kilowatts the, the calculations you can do by yourself now a tourist a tourism resort in Malam Jabba Swat is located near a waterfall uh, where the effective head of 30 meters is available. By diverting the water through a stream. The resort requires a continuous power of 650 kilowatts. So power requirement is what is 650 kilowatts. 
throughout the year. The hydrograph of the stream is as follows. Hydrograph we have not seen, we'll see it in the next video, inshallah. But hydrograph is basically similar to a load curve. It is the discharge versus time graph. Graph, But over here, I would just, they have summarized it over here. So these are the number of months. And then over here, the discharge is given in meters cube per second. So basically for the five months, you have 10.5 is the discharge. For one month, 6.5 is the discharge. And then for six months, 2.2 .2 is the discharge. Assuming the overall efficiency, assuming the overall efficiency of 78%. Uh, calculate the maximum electrical power that can be made available. So the, the power that can be made available number one is without storage. And number second is with storage. Fine. Yes, sir. So first of all, if I talk about, uh, you know, uh, the, the without storage. Uh, without storage right yes so without storage if i talk about so the formula is given so for the first five months first five months so let's say i name is at p1 for the first five months right p1 for this p2 for this p3 for this so p1 is equal to eta eta is uh, given rho is given q is given g you know h you know put down the values for yourself why don't you put it for yourself um, or let me just put it the overall efficiency is 0 0.78 then you have row is 1000 q is given over here is 10.5 uh, g is 9.81 and h is given which is 30 similarly for p2 you would have what the same efficiency the same row discharge is this time 6.5 then you have 9.81 the same then you have the same 30 similarly p3 would be 0 0.78 1000 discharge this time is 2.2 for this month 9.81 and 30 again so the values i'm telling you 2410 kilowatts 2410.32 kilowatts for the first five months then you have 1492.1, 1492.1 kilowatts, and then you have 505 kilowatts. So have a look. If you're not storing it, if you're not storing water, so for the last six months with a low discharge, you have what? The load requirement is not being fulfilled. Whereas in the first two months, you have an excess, uh, for the first two intervals, you have an excess amount of water that is going to waste. The, the overall requirement is 650 kilowatts have a look you are producing almost double but it's going to waste right yes so what we have is we associate uh, 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 what over here you would require a standby plant your stream is not fulfilling your requirement so what do you do is you let's say now for the second case we talk about what uh, we talk about the storage so this was without storage okay this was case number one without storage if number two if you have with storage so if with storage is the case so in that case you will have what you will take the average discharge so the average discharge would be what it would be 10.5 multiplied by the number of months is 5 then plus 6.5 is the discharge with number of months is 1 then plus 2.2 .2 is the discharge and the number of months are 6 and you divide it by 12 so this will give you the average discharge that is available throughout the year so we have basically regulated the flow and this comes out to be 6.01 meter cube per second this is the average discharge for the whole year now now the average power available the average power available so the average power available is again eta is 0 0.78 multiply rho is 1000 multiply q is this one 6.01 multiply g is 9.81 multiply h is the same uh, 30 so the average power comes out to be 1381 1381.15 kilowatts so have a look have a look with storage what have you done is not have you only met your own requirement of 650 you have a reserve capacity of almost 
the same requirement so which means you have you are producing double of what you are uh, requiring so what can you have it you can also you are not only self-sufficient but you can also sell it to someone else you can also sell it to someone else and I believe that this is clear so let's say we have a simpler example from the book we have a simpler example from the book let's see uh, a factory is located near a waterfall where the usable head for the power generation is 25 meters head available is 25 meters then you have what the factory requires continuous power of 400 kilowatt through the air P power requirement is 400 kilowatts throughout the year the river flow is okay so this is the same question okay this is the same question as i've solved over here so this is the same question anyways i will complete it so the discharge is given with the number of month so if you have the months over here and the discharge is given over here so for four months you have 10 meter cube per second then for the next two months you have six meter cube per second and then for the next six you have 1.5 meter yes so if the site is developed as a runoff river plant without storage determine the standby capacity to be provided assume the overall efficiency to be 80 percent so again do the do the the case number one is without storage so without storage you will need what you will at a certain point you will fee uh, you will you know fall short as over here we fell short so we needed a standby capacity so over here without they are asking for that standby capacity so have a look five six, the standby capacity would be what 650 minus 505 145 kilowatts standby capacity is required similarly for the second case is if you associate a storage with it so what would be the case uh, will any standby unit be, be necessary so in that case we saw over here for the previous example it was not necessary and you would you can find the excess energy available as well from here so this is basically the same question you can do it out by yourself I'll go for the next I will go for the next what does it state? A runoff river hydroelectric power plant with pondage has the following data. Installed capacity is 10 megawatts. Installed capacity, I believe we mentioned with a PC, whatever it is. The water head is 20 meters. Overall efficiency is 80%. Load factor is 40%. What does it state? determine the river discharge required for the plant determine the river discharge required for the plant if on a particular day the river flow is this much so this is part number one part number two states what that if the river flow is 20 meter cubes per second what load factor can the plant supply right yes sir so basically you need what the units generated for instance so units generated e is equal to fld into the maximum demand into time so the time is basically unknown over here so let's say the time that we take over here is weekly as the book has taken weekly you can take any other interval the book has taken weekly i'm going in accordance with the book so the units generated would be what the fld is 0 0.40 the maximum demand i will take equal to the installed capacity is 10 to the power 3 into 10 and the number of hours so 24 in one day and 7 in a week so this comes out to be 67.2 into 10 to the power 4 kilowatt hours right yes so let q meter cube be the discharge required yes yes so the available power produced so the available power produced is what eta rho uh, q g h yes yes so the power is what the power produced is eta rho q g h so please put down the values you've got eta you've got rho uh, you've got uh, Q is unknown, right? Q is unknown. You've got G, you've got H. You have H? You have H, yes. So the power produced comes out to be what? This implies that the power produced comes out to be 156.96. 156.96 Q 
kilowatts fine yes okay so this is the average power produced now the units generated per week so the power is energy into time uh, energy is powered into time energy is power into time so again i would take 156.96 power q and multiply time so the time again i'm taking weekly okay this calculation is weekly basis so 24 multiply 7 so this comes out to be what 26369q 26369q kilowatt hour so i have a look this is let's say equation number two and this is equation number one so equate one and two one is equal to two why because this these both are the energy units for the week so from here you can find out the discharge q would come out to be what 24 point 25.48 meter cubes per second right yes similarly for part number two this was for part number one now part number two states what find the load factor so if the river discharge is given so power is what so power is you have through this formula is 156.96 times discharge and discharge is given 20 so the power produced would be 3139.2 3139.2 kilowatts and then you will have what the unit generated on that day the unit generated on that day so the unit generated on that day would be 3139.2 multiplied the number of hours in a day so this would be 75341 75341 kilowatt hours and 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 finally the load factor so the load factor is what the load factor is e divided by pm into t so e comes out to be seven four seven five three four one divided by the maximum demand is 10 megawatts so 10 into 10 to the power 3 is 10 to the power 4 and multiply time so this, this these calculations we did for one day is 24 so the load factor comes out to be 31.4 percent 31.4 percent and i believe this is clear i believe this is clear yes yes sir so i finished this video over here in the runoff plant runoff river plant what do we do we utilize the kinetic energy of the water and these are just simple calculations i'll see you in the next video with the hydrograph maybe the previous video i've uploaded hydrograph i've not recorded it yet but uh, i will just go in this order i will record and upload it next after this we'll see the hydrograph just simple video till then take care goodbye